Hello, hello, hello. Are we are we live? Oh, I didn't get it ready. Oh no. Okay. Oh no. Okay, you can hear me. Hooray, we're live. Okay, let's stop that. Welcome, welcome everyone. Let's make our official announcement. Our little red circle. This is where we are live, and we're doing compiler part 29, almost 30. That's pretty crazy. We put a lot of time into this bad boy, 90 hours or so, and uh, there's just going to be more. With that, let's make our official announcement, and uh, let's think about how we can get going. Let us do this. We are officially live. We have made our announcement and uh, let's talk about what we're going to get going today. So what we're going to get going today is the, first of all, we're going to fix up the lexer so that we can parse multiple byte delimiters if we want to. So we, Serade says, yep. Hey, Serade, what's, what's going on? You're the first one here. We're so glad to have you. Thank you for tuning in, Serade. We were just talking about what we're going to do today. And uh, code-wise, and that is we're going to fix up the Lexer, or at least modify it so that it can uh, handle our new use case with the the two delimiter operator, right? So we're going to have to fix up our parsing of binary operators. And then it's just going to be... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's after that. I'm sure we'll have uh, plenty in the to-do list, though. First, however, hey, Nick says hello. What's up, Nick? Thanks for tuning in. What's going on, Nick? We got Serrate in here. We got Nick. We're popping off. All right. So let's, uh, first of all, let's just get to the Sprima into our fun compiler working directory and open todo.org. Hey, look, update the Lexer. That's what we need to do. But there's something we need to do first. Nick says, just doing a little rust. Nice, getting a little crustacean. Crustacean in your station. So I need to hide that and do this and hope that this all works. Perfect. So as you can see, I'm on my GitHub page, logged in, and Sir Aid, who is in chat right now, forked Fun Compiler. And uh, what you'll actually notice is that if we go to Fun Compiler, there are two pull requests, both made by Sir Aid, which is pretty legendary. Uh, two pull requests at once. Uh, but it's fair; I, they're very specific. <laughs> Uh, messages. It's very awesome. Most people would just put the put them all in one and be like, "Ooh, here we go." But uh, Sir Aid is very organized. TLDR: Integer division sucks. This updates the code generator to use signed division rather than unsigned division, seeing as integer is a signed type. So that'll just deal with the overflow flag, right? On the subject of Intel versus Intel uses Kuita, Kudaka, and Kuko, but AT and T uses Kuitadid. Kudataku and Kukatao. That's a uh, very different. Why do they add a T in? I wonder what the T stands for. <laughs> so on x86 64 to divide racks by some value, the value in racks must first be zero extended to RDX, which is what we did if it is unsigned, and sign extended to racks, Sikituo, if it is signed. So basically we're saying to get an eight byte number. We need to use quad word to octal, octa word is probably what this means. Nick says, any name ideas for a bot that will run code in Discord? Runner up. Uh, run dis, like a, like a pun on Discord. Run dis, like run this. Uh, what about, uh, you're allowed to use all of these, by the way. <laughs> uh. Kuwataku? Is that what you're saying? Kuwataku? Is convert word to quad word. I'm guessing the T stands for two. Oh, nice. Convert word to 
double word, convert double to quad, convert quad to oct. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I like it. Sir Aid, you're awesome. Oh, I misspelt it, rip. It don't matter. I meant kuwataka. <laughs> it don't matter, I know what you meant. Kuwatadid, kuwataka. These are all very good assembly instructions. So basically, we have to convert our eight bytes, our quad word, into an octa word so that the signed uh, bit actually goes all the way to the left because we're actually doing a 16 byte division by an eight byte value, which is uh, just ridiculous, but I get why they do it so that you can get, use the maximum output register. Uh, yeah, the div and idiv, unsigned and signed respectively, then perform the actual division. See, I don't see why, uh, <laughs> so why, how are these different? I'm actually curious. I wonder if idiv doesn't set, so idiv does sign, div does unsigned. So div probably doesn't set the, uh, the flags for carry or whatever, or overflow. I'm not sure. Failing with division, failing to do this properly may result in either an incorrect result or a uh, debug exception if the quotient does not fit in racks. What is that? A DE exception. I I remember it, but I don't. Uh, I don't remember. During OS Dev, I I knew all these by heart, but I no longer know all these. What is this? <laughs> Here it is. OS Dev Wiki, our best friend. What is DE? Divide by zero error. Why wouldn't it be DZ? Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> divide by zero. It would be a divide by zero error, even if we don't divide by zero. If the quotient does not fit in racks. Sir Aid says division error. It's not just divide by zero. Interesting. So just DE division error. Crazy. See, division is so complicated, there's an entire x86-64 exception on the hardware level <laughs> to deal with it. Division sucks. In any case, uh, your code looks great. You added in the actual, <laughs> this is awesome. You added in the actual page to go to so that if anyone's curious, like what the hell does this instruction even do? Like, uh, what? We don't have to, uh, use it, but we could have to use it. <laughs> Convert word to double word, quad word. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. And I love the notes about uh, AT&T versus Intel syntax in the pull request. Very professional. So we do signed. You updated all the comments. This is professional. This is like quality. This is a quality pull request. Uh, I don't need to review it. I just need to merge it. So this is number two, right? So I'm going to merge this one first. Hopefully everything goes fine. And uh, basically the changes made are that we use idiv instead of div. I like it. And we no longer need to zero RDX. Oh, look at me. I missed this entire Kukatao. So we convert our eight bytes into a 16 byte number using Kukatao. Quad word to octa word. It's in the morning, chat. Please forgive me. <laughs> it's a cold, it's a cold summer day. Please forgive me. <laughs> but yeah, this is amazing. The gist is basically that the CPU expects you to use div plus setting RDX to zero or idiv plus kukato or things break. Crazy. <laughs> we, so we, King Bun says cold summer day. You know it. It's been like 100 degrees for months and then just now it's 60 degrees. <laughs> the weather's so bad. We're so screwed as a planet. We got 20 years then everyone's not going to be able to live anymore. Can I go back to the... See, we're, we've run into this bug before, where we have to go to commits, then conversation. We're going to merge this bad boy. Okay, Serade, we're merging this. This is beautiful code. And, uh... Yeah, I don't think I need to say anything. I'm just going to confirm the merge, because it's a beautiful pull request. There's one more, though. <laughs> if you remember, there's two! <laughs> King Bun says, what part of the world? Murka. Uh, Western Murka is what I'll go with. Northwestern Murka. 
This replaces shift right with SAR, since the only the latter handles, ha handles, handles negative integers correctly. So basically, shift right is a literal shift right of the bytes, which means that shifting negative 64... So shifting 3 a negative amount? Or is this shifting 64? This should be shifting 3 a negative amount. Ooh. So it, it wraps all the way around to an uh, to a signed number with F at the top instead of having our... Because this is 110. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so instead of... <laughs> I like it. I like how this is done. That's also a really big number. Sir Aid says negative 64 is shifted by 3. Okay. <laughs> I never know if it's uh, AT&T or Intel because I'm pretty sure in Intel with the GNU assembler you still have to use the dollars I'll go with it's always AT&T now destination first <laughs> then the operand at least this is what C compilers do bit shifting Intel doesn't use dollar Intel doesn't use dollar in the GNU assembler I don't even or percentage even in the GNU assembler See, I thought in the GNU assembler, Intel syntax just made it so that it swapped the destination source in some of them. <laughs> but there's no dollar or percentage even in the GNU assembler. That's crazy. That's crazy, dog. That's why I don't screw with the GNU assembler. <laughs> you just write the syntax that you've seen work. I'm not sure the GNU assembler supports Intel. Oh, honey. <laughs> They do. I've always used NASM, lol. Oh, I'm part, I'm part, I know NASM perfectly. But, uh, NASM does use Intel syntax, but GNU also supports Intel syntax. You, you just put a preprocessor directive. It's like dot Intel syntax or something. You have to do as directives and then look for Intel syntax. Let's see if it works. I'm pretty sure. So there's dot att underscore syntax, which I presume if we search. If we could get to the GNU assembler documentation. So funny. Basically, GNU as has uh, directives. Like, hey, where were we? Dot att syntax and dot intel underscore syntax. Yeah, here it is. Dot intel underscore syntax, no prefix. There you go. Then you can just use this around your assembly and see there's still percentage. No, that's a percentage for the uh, extended assembly. But you're probably right. There's no dollar here. In either case, I'm wrong. But yeah, GNU does support Intel syntax. But there's still percentage signs on the register. AT&T register name and Intel syntax. See? So it's a, it's a little different. Perfect. <laughs> oh Christ. What is dash M assembler? I've never seen that. In any case, we have a pull request. <laughs> Sir Aid says Intel syntax with dollar and percentage sign. Now that's cursed. Now we know what assembler we have to write. Also, Lamau, what a pull request. <laughs> We're just going to merge it. Thank you for writing all this. I really appreciate it. And keeping it so organized. <laughs> you are truly... Uh, I can't remember the the saying, so I'm just going to make something up. A man of my own heart or something like that. Sir A, Masm equals Microsoft Assembly. Literal one character, Lamau. <laughs> the best type of pull request. And they're in. They're here. Uh, Sir Aid, MASM does mean Microsoft Assembly, but not when it's passed to the GNU Assembler as a as a thing. We're looking at, uh, I think we can do this. There's probably dash MASM in here. See, they all start with M. See, there's March, Mtoon, Mississi, Moparand, Mavix, <laughs> Mavix League, you know what I mean? I assume it's a MASM here for M assembly. 
which I've never seen because it's not actually here. So I was curious, like, what is M-Assembly? Maybe it's for GCC. But hey, look. They even have that. These seem new. Do, do, do I have a new GNU as? I do. <laughs> Sir Aid says, I suppose probably not, yeah. I don't know if GNU, if you work on GNU, if you're even allowed to say the words Microsoft. <laughs> In any case, let's open up Maggot, our favorite Git porcelain, and let's do a fetch with, from all remotes, because why not? I think there's only one. And we can see that, hey, we got unpolled stuff. There's stuff to do. Also, I should have uh, switched it from merge commit to uh, squash, but it doesn't matter. Squash and rebase. Either way. Either way. I could have, I maybe even could have, I could have done fast forward <laughs> merges on these. This could have been so much cleaner, but it doesn't matter. There's four commits for two pull requests. And it's beautiful. I gotta remember to click that button on GitHub when merging the pull request. Uh, pull requests? Oh, I, I could have clicked number three. Perfect. But there's a little button when you merge, and then it says, hey, do, would you like to make a merge commit, or would you like to squash these and rebase? And that makes it so there's not a merge commit. But I, I screwed up, as I usually do, so let's continue with the tradition, and pull these on into our code. Everything should be fine. Oh, we, we have this. These were all comments. I should have looked at this first. Uh, blip. Don't need it. Thank you. Can I pull now? Sir Aid says, just fix it afterwards. After all, it's not like Git is confusing at times, right? Yeah, not at all. I'll just do an interactive rebase, uh, you know, squash it up, and then uh, force push. I could do that, but I'm, I, uh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with the two commits. They don't bother me that bad. Uh, what are, what are we doing? Oh, I'm trying to pull. Thank you for the changes. I could have stashed my comments and stuff, but I don't think it's really that important. Everything I had was just uh, debug stuff. That for problems that no longer exist. <laughs> Alrighty, let's think about how to fix this parser now that we have our updated code base. Oh, I should probably also run it and test uh, test things, but it doesn't really matter. Debug and debug funk. Oh, look at me closing Emacs on accident. Debug funk will pass in der verbose. And we can do examples slash, what do we got? I don't actually know. So I'm just going to run this because it's going to fail, but that'll save it. I can pack it. Pack it. I can pick it back up again. And then find, let's do a div test. That seems like a good one to test. Perfect. Okay, code.s. Okay, code.s. Nice. Here we can see the proper... Uh, division happening. That's beautiful. It's crazy that Seeky quad word. So does this, and this is cursed. <laughs> Why does this work this way? Oh my. Sir Aid says, let's just not talk about all the times copying all the code to a separate directory and making a new repo was the easiest way to fix a problem I had with Git, okay? If you get in the middle of a commit, in the middle of a merge, and then it's like, there's merge conflicts, that is, it's the worst possible thing that could happen. It screws every single file, it inserts things, it, your code doesn't compile anymore, it's like, this is horrible. It's the worst. <laughs> okay. And uh, I assume as is fine with this, so let's feed it into as, make an object file. Let's feed it into LD, make an executable file, and then let's run that executable. Failed with code 2 and no output. Hey, I'm pretty sure that's correct. If we look at examples div test, we can see that we have 8 bit shifted to the right 2. 
Remember, this is our temporary bit shifting going on here. Still have to load Un mode. Again, should just add this to the auto load, but I'm lazy. So two to the left two, this should be like eight or something. Let's recompile and run that shell command again. And as you can see, we've got code eight, as well as before we got what? Code two, there it is. It's hard to find because they all move <laughs> as you do things. Fun though. In any case, it looks like everything is working. Let's make sure this is six. And it was six. We are good. Everything's working. Probably better than it was before. And we can probably now do like negative numbers and stuff like that. But uh, I'm not screwing with that. Because <laughs> I don't want to embarrass myself by not knowing the answer. Sir Aid says division is horribly slow. So I suppose even the hardware people didn't know how to deal with it and just went, screw this, they'll figure this out. Yeah, they just made a <laughs> what was easy for the hardware. And they're like, eh, they can figure out division. They don't need it, really. <laughs> Eternal Wild Fox, hello, how's it going? I'm doing okay. Do you ever sleep, Eternal Wild Fox? You get so much done. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. He says, doing okay. I'm glad. Eternal Wild Fox says, ye, I sleep, I sleep. <laughs> all right, that's good. I just want to make sure you get your beauty rest. We all need it. Uh, I'm, you have made so much progress in the Discord, it's incredible. Let's just, let's just take a moment. The man, the myth, the legend, Eternal Wild Fox. <laughs> Ooh, this was a while ago. Where is it? Where's the, the token-based parser? Or the, the rule-based parse rules? Are they gone? Where are the parse rules? <laughs> Here they are. Oh, and you add your... I should be in, a, in an expand somewhere, shouldn't it? Here it is. Look at me. Scrolling, white, scrolling right past it over and over. But this is actually a really cool way to do a, par a lexer, excuse me. So you have like... Uh, a rule for every character and it creates a new uh, function that you can call and it has the specific arguments which is just this is beautiful and it tells you uh, what to do like oh this is an identifier you should return see these are left brackets right brackets this is very beautiful <laughs> I made a lot of uh, <laughs> parsers like this that were hand done and they were not this nice I promise so this is very cool you have operators you have characters you have Sir Aid says today I learned you can scroll left and right in discord lol yeah this is just an html uh html5 box like that's what they're trying to copy so html5 always has the scroll bar at the bottom <laughs> but I'm just using my uh my middle mouse to scroll left and right it's very beautiful and it's it's very clean code you should see my character by character parsers they are not this clean I'll have to take a look at the rest I think I did earlier Sir Aid says I suppose I suppose it is literally just a website ye yeah this is isn't discord using electron or I don't I don't even know what framework they use to be honest but I'm pretty sure it's all web-based in any case, Eternal Wild Fox is making amazing progress on lexing, parsing, making his own language just the same as we are. Sir Aid says, yeah, Electron. Yeah, so everything is just HTML5 with Electron, which is uh, crazy that we have desktop. <laughs> desktop one. Check the parser code. Ooh, hitting us with that new, that new, new. What do we got? Oh, it's the same. Oh, that's clean. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So you have these things called parse rules. And parse rule function expressions, which tells what it is. I, I'll have to download this. This is cool. <laughs> I've almost, I don't feel like I've seen a lot of 
parsers like this. This is almost like Natalie did it. This is really cool. So you have like all these, you basically just create parse rules as you go. With which has token rules within it. Oh my. Oh my. I mean, it's very similar to the Lexer code. And honestly, it's, it's understandable. So if we have like... Oh, these are all rules for parsing, and then you'll parse using these rules. Ooh. Ooh, I'm getting it now. With precedence. Wow. Oh, wow. Adderson says, hey, Lance. Hey, chat. How are you doing today? We're doing good. How are you doing, Adderson? Thank you for tuning in. Sir Aid says, yeah, this looks like parser combinators to me. It's really cool. It's amazing. Eternal Wild Fox is happy. Yes. It's really cool code. I've like it's uh, it's really unique. Like oh, a plus is just a uh, a parse expression, which is a binary parse rule, which is has the precedence term. Very cool. This is very cool. I like how this is done. <laughs> and then I assume, I presume, when you parse, you just parse all these expressions by precedence, and then, wow, oh wow. That's very cool. That's very cool. Let's update our terrible, terrible Lexer in a terrible, terrible way now. <laughs> How about that? How about that? Yep, still to do. So when we have a delimiter, you can see that... Here is how we get delimiters. So if you don't know how parsing, or lexing, works, let's say we have a as an integer equal to 69, our favorite number. We're going to start with a source and a token. So source is going to point here because that's our source code, a integer 69. And token is going to have a beginning and an end pointer, and it's going to point here and here, right? So we can do beginning, end, and source. Eternal Wild Fox says, one day I will build it in C also. Like in the ocean? <laughs> no, that's really cool. That's a that's a, an amazing goal. And I can tell you're going to do it. I believe in you. Adderson says, doing good too. I'm glad. Awesome, Adderson. We are having fun. We're going to work on this Lexer a little bit so we can parse things that we can't parse right now. Sir Aid says, my Lexer is usually 20 times the size of that function. So to be fair, it's fairly excusable that it can't Lex right, right, lol. <laughs> yeah, right now, our problem is that we can't Lex right, right. It's two delimiters. So... Effectively, how our lexing works, we have a source, a beginning, and an end. Then we say, okay, with our source, we're going to skip past any white space. So if you had like this, you, your source would just, your beginning of the token would skip to all, skip past all the white space. And after doing that, we set the end to the beginning so that we move this pointer up as well. So now you can see that it points here, but it actually points to nothing here. The length is zero between beginning and end. So this would be a, a zero length string to beginning to end. You know what I mean? Beginning just equals end, which means as soon as you start, it's over. That's an empty string. So the, that's fine. So now we have to move end, right? We have to move end to the end of the next token. And at the end of the next token, well, first of all, we have to check if there's a comment and... Don't worry about it. Don't worry about the comment code. <laughs> then we say the end is set to anything that isn't a delimiter. And delimiters include white space as well as all these characters. So for example, if you have a comma, you want that to end a token. You don't want a comma to be a part of a name, right? So if you type something, for example, like a is an integer equal to 69 and b is an integer equal to 42 you don't want 69 comma to be one thing even though there's white space 
delimited there. So you want this to be a delimiter as well, so that 69 can begin here, end here, and that'll be everything. That'll be hunky-dory. And if it's not there, the white space will catch it, right? So in doing so, we make all our operators as well delimiters, so that if we happen to do a uh, like this, we want a as a token, then we want this as a token, the open paren, then we want the close paren as a token. We don't want like a open paren, close paren as a single token. We could do it like that, it's just not how we do it. So all these things are delimiters. And honestly, so that we can have expressions, we should have like plus, minus, and uh, multiply and divide in here as well. So to do, think harder about delimiters. <laughs> Because these are just the ones we've been rolling with since we wrote the lexer. <laughs> In any case, source will always stay the same to your source code, right? Let's say it's right here. And beginning and end will get updated. So by end skipping to the next delimiter, A has a white space after it, or a colon, right? Which is also a delimiter. So if A has white space or a colon after it, that means A we'll skip past and then we'll get to the white space or the colon and then we'll say okay be between beginning and end we have an a so now this token is actually something the next time around we're going to have the same token and we're going to pass in source as the end of the current token so that we start lexing at the end of the current token right and what will happen is token beginning equals source, so we update that. We have token beginning past all white space, which means we'll update that. We'll, we won't worry about the comment code. Then we'll skip to the end, to the next delimiter, which is actually white space here. And you can see that we end up with the colon as its own token. And the issue with that is that we won't actually skip the colon to the white space because the colon is a delimiter itself. So when we try and move the end up here, we'll, oh yeah, skip from the beginning to a delimiter. It goes, well, buddy, that's a delimiter. <laughs> we did. We've, we've skipped. So what happens is the, uh, the end just stays the same as the beginning because that's what we updated it to here. So it doesn't get updated at all. That's where the next delimiter is. It's a delimiter at the beginning. So we say here, if token end equals the beginning, add one to it. Because if this happens, that means we're at a delimiter. So just move it one forward. Does that make any sense? <laughs> and the problem is that here, we have no way to tell if it's uh, that this has happened. So we need some way to tell that this has returned a single delimiter. And we probably also need a way <laughs> to extend a current token, because remember our problem. Our problem is that we can't lex write write as one token, it's two delimiters, because we just use this plus one trick, right? We don't have like all our operators listed out specifically, we just have it kind of very generic. <laughs> so the problem is that we would like this generic lex to be used by like a lex extend and that would effectively say while this is happening continue to do it or at least that's what we'll do in parse binary infix operator so we need the return we need to somehow return the fact that this is a delimiter we could add something to a token we could add a parameter to the function we could add let's think about this <laughs> We're going to think about our solutions. So we can't lex write write as one token. It's two delimiters. We only need to lex this in one context when parsing, when lexing slash parsing operators. Otherwise, delimiters always delimit. Right? So we need some way to say, okay, while we're still getting delimiters, please create another token. But here's the problem, if it's not an operator, okay, here's the thing. So what if we have like, I'm trying to think, can we have an operator 
that should be delimited not by white space or anything. See, this wouldn't be a delimiter. This would actually have skipped here. Ooh, okay, I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to get it. So when we skip a delimiter, when we skip to a, del a delimiter, like for the four here, that'll mean that we have this specific control flow. We can do something here. And we can say, oh, okay, we have, we lexed a delimiter. So when we have like a plus four like this, we can say, okay, we lex a to the white space. That's the delimiter. Move past white space, go to the next delimiter. But the next delimiter is here, so we'll get one. So we'll get plus as its own thing. And then we'll get four as its own thing. So that won't be confusing. I don't think we're ever going to have like this happen. This isn't really valid syntax at all. So we don't have to worry about that. What about like an array access? What are our other delimiters? White space, comma. So I can see a comma happening. That could be an issue. So like if you did a plus four as a parameter, then it would parse See, that's still not an issue because the plus comes in between. I'm sorry if I'm just babbling. Please ask questions if I'm being confusing. But the plus I don't think will ever be lexed next to other delimiters. Like, we'll never have a binary operator with, like, arrow, <laughs> arrow brackets bunched up next to it and have that be valid syntax. Sir Aid says, what about a plus minus 4 for a plus minus 4? Okay, so a plus minus four. Ah. Okay. Versus a plus minus four. I like how you think, Sir Aid. Thank you. <laughs> hmm. And also, what about a dereference? Hmm. <laughs> I don't think that's a problem because these are unary prefix operators. But we need the lexer to separate them. Hmm. Well, plus minus isn't a valid operator. But we have to match the longest operator possible. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, God, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. If we knew in the lexer, maybe not even in the lexer, if we knew in the binary parsing what's a binary operator and what isn't, which we definitely do, then we can check that every time we advance one more time and say, okay, add this to the token as well, extend the end of the token from plus to plus minus will only ever do that if it's a valid binary operator. How about that? But this is a valid binary operator. But that doesn't matter because we're saying the whole thing. Yeah, we're fine. I was like, wait, but minus is. <laughs> but plus minus is what would be we'd be checking. Because we're going to lex plus and we're going to go, okay, that's a binary operator. Let's look ahead for more binary operator. And let's add, like, check for plus minus being one. Or here, in this case, we'd say, oh, no, there's white space next. And uh, we don't have to worry about it. Actually, there's white space next, but we skip past it. It wouldn't even matter. So these would actually be parsed in the same way, or lexed in the same way, because we'd get a plus minus four. And then parsing-wise, we'd say, oh, plus is a binary operator. Plus minus, not a binary operator. Which would also allow you to do things like... <laughs> This is a little scary, but like that. And uh, so we have to make sure there's no white space as well. That's another thing we have to do. So I would love to know when we lex, if we skipped white space, and if we returned a single delimiter. Those would both be helpful. Sir Aid says, I typically do something like, if the token is right, check if the next character is right, and if so, the token is right, right, and so on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, so, effectively, would we want this to be A, right, right, 4? I think we would. 
if there's nothing in between here, this is this is fine, right? I don't think there's a problem with that. It's confusing. And as soon as you write something in here, like uh, B, then this becomes A is greater than B is greater than four, which also I should test. <laughs> I guess that would be fine. It'd just be two binary operators. But, uh, <laughs> Sir Aid says certified Fortran moment. Ye. So I think we're going to have like A right, right, four equals A right, right, four. Okay. And these are both equal. This is going to work. This is going to work. And as for here, it's the same thing. Plus at is not a binary operator. So we'll get plus and go, that's a binary operator. Start after that. Look at us. So now we need to start after that lexing, right? <laughs> It's a little confusing. We need to start after that lexing. So what do we need? We basically have to say, I'm going to call it lex extend. And we're going to keep beginning of token the same, but extend it by, but extend the end by another token. So this will like eat another lex into another token. And we'll lex from the end of the token. So we don't even need a source. Here, this is messy. <laughs> Begin lexing at the end of the given token. Perfect. <laughs> I'm glad we have a certified Fortran moment. That makes me feel good. It makes me feel okay inside. Okay, so uh, blah, 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 blah. what are we going to do? Keep beginning of token the same. So we're going to create a new token. Token. Uh, new token. I'm, I'm not... <laughs> Not that smart. Equals token beginning. So I guess it doesn't matter. Just matters what source we give, right? I think new token can be uninitialized. Token just gets overwritten and never read to. Token beginning, I should say. Token end also just gets overwritten and never read to. So source is what matters. So then we can just lex error equals lex if error.type return that b return error. Okay, perfect. So now lex from token end into new token. And then update token end to new token end. That's not a pointer. So basically, we have a token. We start at the end of it. So let's say we get a token uh, plus. We start at the end of it, which would be here. So let's say it's part of like a plus two. So we start at token end, which would be here. In the new token, we skip white space, get here, we get two. And by doing so, Ba, 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 ba. Then we have plus two and we could extend those together. The problem is the white space exists. So this isn't going to work <laughs> if there's white space in between because there's going to be white space in there. We would have to create a new string for the token, which we don't really want to do. We want the token to be a string view. So we'd have to skip white space in our comparison. Okay, we do not allow <laughs> this no longer <laughs> does not equal that. We we changed that. Certified not Fortran moment. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Basically, we just don't want to deal with having to create a new string to compare right, right. You know what I mean? We don't want to have to remove white space from a string. 
Uh, fix me. We remove white space during binary operator comparison. <laughs> From token string view. During binary operator comparison, then this would be a certified. This would work. <laughs> Sir Aid says, yeah, I was going to say right space right, right space right, etc. Being the same as right right does make figuring out what operation to emit a bit more complicated since a string compare with right right isn't going to cut it anymore. Yee, yee, yee. But we're eventually going to move operators, binary operators, from string compares in code gen to an enum. And then we're going to have user-defined binary operators just use numbers that are outside the range of the enum that is built in. And then it, everything will work. So this will happen eventually again, because it'll all be enum based and the parser will actually create the enum for the binary operator and you won't have to figure out what the binary operator is in code gen. Like, oh, what does a left bracket mean today? You know what I mean? It'll just be an enum that is like binary operator uh, plus or shift right. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. It'll get better. It'll get better. That's what they say when it never gets better. But yeah, so that's how our lexer works. So we would like to hope that this lex extend works. I guess we just have to try it. So when we parse a binary infix operator... Also, did we break everything? Everything's still working. Okay. Why is... what is wrong? Why is error not highlighted? Hello? There is a type. <laughs> Sir Aid says, yeah, I usually have a huge token type enum, lol. See, I can't do that. I hate when people... I don't hate it. That's a sh too strong of a word. I... It, like, irks something within me when I see that happen. It's like, but those aren't token types. <laughs> it's like, no, but it works. So who am I to say that it, it's not the way to do things? Like, it's the, it works and it, people understand it. And they create awesome things with it. So it's like, I'm not going to tell them they can't. Because <laughs> they're awesome. They're making awesome things. Like you, Sir Aid. I'm sure your giant token type enums are actually in the cause of an awesome program that does really cool things. And uh, that I'd be really interested in. It's just when I see it, my, my stomach gets in a little knot. Like, but those aren't token types. And I push up my glasses like the little nerd I am. <laughs> But you definitely triggered me by saying that. I'm triggered. <laughs> I'm triggered. I need that, like, ultra-loud bass sound to just, uh, like, on a button. So I can just press it and... <laughs> okay, what am I doing? So when we parse a binary operator, what happens? What happens? So we try to environment get global binary operators. Okay, this is going to be confusing. So what we were talking about before... Continue lex until op until operators are no longer getting got. This will require lecture knowledge of what's an operator and what isn't. See, it won't. <laughs> now we are we are smarter than that. So the idea is that well, it won't be right here. So we advance the lexer, we get an operator symbol, and we say if it's a binary operator, cool. But before we say if it's a binary operator, cool and all we have to check if the binary operator, if the extended binary operator is cool and all. Am I making any sense? Let's see. So, create, uh, extend the state copy token by one further lexing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, it's a parsing state, so I need state copy current. I could just put in current copy, but we'll use state copy. This returns an error. But only if this happens. If error.type. 
Oh, but for example, Korth had the same thing where it had a huge token type where it handled like each binary operator had its own token type and each each keyword had its own token type and each I was like, this is this is messy. <laughs> I couldn't it's just the code became unmaintainable for me. Extend the state copy token by one further lexing to look ahead for bigger binary operator. We should do this in a while loop. Then we're gonna do like this. We should do like, do this. While that. And then we're going to have to create operator symbol each time. So extend, create the symbol, look it up in the environment. Why do we return error here? There. That's better. Like, wait. <laughs> Sir Aid says, personally, I'm somewhat triggered by the fact that you indent using two spaces and not four, so I suppose we're even now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we're, we're evenly, evenly triggered. I like it. <laughs> Eternal Wild Fox says, working on the if statement. Wow, you work so fast, Eternal Wild Fox. That's incredible. I'm really curious how an if statement will fit into this expression parsing. Or it's in here and I just, it's in the 405 lines that I can't see. I've been streaming for nearly an hour. Just want to say, check out that discord down below. It is in the Twitch about section and it is a forever invite link. You get announcements every time I go live. If you join, we'll all wave at you. And uh, it's a lot of fun. We have great discourse. And you can get code reviewed if you would like it, or just share your progress, do whatever, as long as it's positive. Be sure to check out the YouTube for previous broadcasts if that interests you, as well as follow on Twitch. We love those Twitch followers. Like the Mr. Software, followed 14 minutes ago. Thank you, Mr. Software. Shouts out to yous. Sir Aid says, I like having different enum values for different keywords and operators and such, so I can use them in lookup tables, and it also makes comparisons a bit simpler, IMO. It's true. It does make the actual, like, uh, compiler and optimization and everything simpler. Eternal Wild Fox says, there is the if statement. Ooh, he, he pasted it. New token rule. New parse rule function statement. I didn't create a new line. Well, with a parse rule with precedence. Okay, I'm starting to see it now. Ooh. I like it. Basically, if creates a new statement instead of an expression. So then you're going to... Ooh, okay. Okay. I like it. There is the if statement. Ah, yes, Twitch. Parse rule dot precedence is definitely a link. Thank you so much, <laughs> Lamau. It is really funny. That is not a link. <laughs> I wonder why they think it's a link. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. But yeah, that's really cool. So it just creates a new state. Oop statement instead of a <laughs> instead of a parse expression that's very cool and it just has a parse rule with no precedence and uh, that's cool i like it i'm curious so we're gonna need these things up here
Okay, just answering a text. One moment. Figured I'd rather be honest rather than just be silent. <laughs> Okay. I'm ready. Eternal Wild Fox says, It is safe to say I understand parsing now. Be right back. Coffee time. Lamal. <laughs> so effectively, when we're parsing an operator, we would like to... Okay, then we're going to say uh, parsing state backup. No, we're just going to have token... Uh, Operator back. Operator token. Sure. And this is going to equal current copy, which should copy the bits over. And then we'll say we would have every time we environment get. So we're going to have to do this a little differently. Every time we environment get. Then we're going to say operator token equals state copy current. So this means that our operator token will always point to the uh, the proper thing, which we actually don't even need this token. We just need this symbol. So maybe we say node pointer operator symbol equals node symbol from buffer. Do the whole thing. See, we already have it. So then we can just say operator symbol operator symbol equals this. But we would like to create a new operator symbol. Sure. Terrible naming, but sure. Sure. All right. And then effectively we would like to say if we do get this let's say if we don't we're just gonna break and let's do like forever so extend the state copy token by one further so we get maybe plus maybe something like that we probably only want to do this if we actually get a binary operator as well I mean no we should probably do this so that we can look ahead for binary operators in any case, <laughs> in any case, we will extend to an environment get on the symbol and figure this out. Sraid says forever. Nice. <laughs> it's true. We didn't do a while one. We did a forever. So thinking about this control flow, we get this operator symbol. And then we look ahead by one and say, is that valid? See, this isn't perfect. We should, we should, all, we should kind of do this part and then check if it's a valid binary operator, right? Let's think about this. So a plus minus four, we want to get a plus and then look ahead for minus, we'll get plus minus. That's not a valid binary operator, so we'll use plus. When we get here, we want to say a right. That is a valid operator, but we still want to look ahead and see if that's, this is a valid operator first. But that's not really what we want to do. We don't want to look ahead one and check if it's a binary operator. We want to look ahead all. Because what if we want, like, we're not. But what if this is going to be a binary operator, right? The idea is it's going to need to understand when to stop. We basically need to continue building a token until we get to something that's white space and not 
an actual operator. White space or something else like a number. So anything that's not a delimiter. So when, okay. <laughs> if we check the beginning of the end, <laughs> this is so confusing. Let's say we lex extend, then we're going to have the end of our token. Okay, just after once, we're going to have the end of our token pointing at the thing after the token, which if it's a delimiter, means it's the right side. Right? In this case, it means it's it could be another delimiter or just anything after another token. So we could say if we parse two of these tokens in a row, make it a bit shift right, but that's too specific. I don't want to like write that control flow in to the parser. I want that to be done automatically somehow. And to do that, we're going to have to extend until we reach something that isn't a delimiter, but also isn't, or it could be white space though. So we have to check, okay, if it's not a de- <laughs> Sir Aid says loop. <laughs> go to loop. Oh god. Yes, the ultimate. Beautiful. <laughs> the assembly loops. Sir Aid says, now I want to make an infinite loop alignment chart. The label plus go to one is definitely chaotic evil. Ooh, that'd be good. Arusia says, do you have a fixed set of operators? Uh, what? <laughs> Arusius is asking, do you have a fixed fixed set of operators? We want to, uh, I just want to make it easy to add new operators and change what they are. So currently binary operators are defined like this. So I want to make this be able to be bit shift right, but I can't. <laughs> it's, it's currently we don't lex it or and parse it like that. Or can user define their own operators? I see. User will be able to define their own operators. They'll be more like functions, but they will be parsed as binary operators and stuff. So, yay. Yeah. Nexovec says, hello, Mr. Lens. Hello, Nexovec. How's it going? But yeah, user binary operators are not going to be parsed in this same way. This is for parsing all our built-ins. User binary operators are going to be a variable access, effectively. Nexavex says, tis fine. Nice, I'm glad you're doing fine. I'm glad you're doing fine, Nexavex. Thank you for tuning in. We're, glad, we're very glad to have you. Arusia says, ah, I see. Yes, you do see. <laughs> okay, uh... So thinking about this, we need to skip past everything until we get to something that isn't white space. Okay, until we get to something that is white space or isn't a delimiter. Okay, is white space, isn't delimiter. I'm going to steal this and go down to our binary infix operator. Eternal Wild Fox says, next project might be a toy database engine, parsing SQL queries. That sounds really cool. What are you, uh, I don't even know. That's crazy. <laughs> Get ready for hash tables. So is white space isn't delimiter. So effectively, When node end when token end and is not null terminator. Extend binary operator. 
Eternal Wild Fox <laughs> puts a smiley face. I care about SQL. SQL is great. Oh, because Arusia says, who cares about SQL? Just make your own relational language. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Cutting deep. Eternal Wild Fox cares about SQL. SQL is great. SQL. See, if you say it both ways, you make everybody mad. <laughs> no, that's really cool. It will be cool. It, I find it interesting to, like, write programs that interact with things that already exist as well. Like, writing an assembler for a syntax that already exists in assembly, like Intel syntax. Versus just making your own up, assembly up, if that makes sense. Next of X says, you just said SQL is great. I mean, it, 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 it kind of is. It's not bad. It's just a table managing. <laughs> it's basically just for databases. Like, it's got everything it needs. Like, Git. Okay, basically. This is a char pointer. So this is a char pointer. So this is a character. So this is a single byte and we can do a comparison like that. And I'd like to say while state copy current end equals white space. So effectively, I think I'd like to use Sturspin. So token beginning plus equals white space. So that will skip to beginning, but I just like to find first occurrence of character. Right? No, I'd like to compare a single character. So what am I comparing this sing the single character? I'd like to check if it's like, is this single character within a whole bunch of things? Is that possible? Isn't there like a control character or something like that? So I'm going to have to use it backwards, for C-spin backwards. Let's let's look it up. We're gonna look at Stir Seaspin and uh, the C library size T-shirt takes in two strings. So in string.h, is there not something that compares a character to a string? It'd probably be an int. Searches for the first occurrence of the character C by the argument string. So Sturcher is what we need. And Sturcher is what? Look in string for a character. Return. What is the return value? Null if the character is not found. See, this is perfect. We need Sturcher. Whoops. Sturcher it is. And we would like to say, this is our character. Look inside this string and Sturcher it up. So while Sturcher, so while is white space, I guess I should say isn't white space or is delimiter. I got these backwards. So if it isn't white space, that means this will be null. Okay, or if it's a delimiter, right? So while, I guess this would be and, we want to ensure that it's not white space. We want to ensure that it is a delimiter. And then we want to also say is not a null terminator. So while, here, let's do this and do char after operator. Sure. Sure. And this will just equal to this. After operator isn't really a, a good name. I don't like it. So we're going to say op look ahead. I think that's better. So check that it isn't white space. That it is thing. Landar XT says, int, is Landar here? Ooh, yee. Landar shows up once again. It's so good to have you, Landar. Thank you for tuning in. What's good? Hopefully you. So while 
it isn't white space, is a delimiter, and is not a null terminator. Perfect. Is delimiter. I guess is delimiter would also see delimiter contains white space, so we have to rule it out first. Is delimiter and is not null terminator, extend binary operator. And we'll say, oh maybe, oh boy. And this is basically we'll just say See, we'll just use we're just gonna use this. I've changed my mind. I know this is bad. It doesn't matter. We're just gonna use this because also I forgot one. Then we can just do this. So extend the token until you can't. <laughs> Lender XT says, the world is terrible, nothing is good, but I'm here watching the stream, so at least I have that. I feel for you, man. I, I get what you mean. The world does suck, and it's it's very evil. You know that uh, I was working on a leaf, that forging that leaf? <laughs> well, uh, another one, I guess I should say, after the spoon. It just, I was hitting it, and it just cracked off. <laughs> and the leaf went, the red hot leaf went flying into the air, and I was like, I screamed like a little girl, like, oh god, please don't land on me. And that's why I wear eye protection. <laughs> but it was, it was insane. And it, uh, yeah, so it just broke off, it cracked, sheared right off the tip from work hardening. So it's like, why even try? <laughs> Everything I make is just gonna break. I spent like two hours forging it, then it just shatters in half. It's like, it's metal. It's not supposed to shatter. God damn it. It's fine. I'll get better, though. The world is terrible. And I know that's a very first world problem, but it's me uh, trying to make a joke. I'm not bringing up my actual problems on screen for y'all. Y'all don't need that. Eternal Wild Fox says, I would be crazy if I would get the interpreter also going today based on the new code. That would be crazy. <laughs> that's so much work. King Buns says, I mean, that's a question about life in general. Everything is going to break. Nexavex says, you punched it too, may too much, maybe? Nah, no punch, no holes. I, uh, I did, I hammered it. I hammered it quite, quite hard. So maybe I did, uh, work hard in it by hammering it too much. But I, I worked it real hot. It was hot, hot, hot. Rusius says, well, you can now proudly claim that you're able to shatter metal. True, true. <laughs> I should make a, uh, like an attachment for my arm that lets me shatter metal. Because all you have to do is like dip some carbon heavy steel into some cold water after it's red hot. Then you can just, you can shatter it pretty easy with a hammer. Make a little fist attachment, like steel knuckles that are made out of hardened steel. I guess I'd have to have a case hardened steel knuckles. In any case, it would work. Nexovex says, well, no surprise, you used a hammer to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Lander XT says, here in the UK, as you may know, our queen died, and the news wants us all to care about some 96-year-old who never did an honest day's work. <laughs> I know, I'm, that's an that's a interesting view on it. I am surprised that people are surprised that a 96-year-old died. I would say that, that that makes sense. You know, I would venture to say it makes sense, I should say. Does this make any sense? So we're going to use operator symbol, which we'll use current, beginning, and length. And length is not updated. I wish you could like plus equals one to multiple ints at a time. Like I wish you could do this. I wish this worked, <laughs> but it don't.
Lander XT says the news here lies a lot about the health of our royals by pretending they're fine up until the last moment. Odd. Nexavex says unpopular take. Not really. <laughs> From what I've seen online, that's what most people are, are saying. They're like, does anybody actually care? <laughs> it's the old lady. Lander XT, I think you have a very accurate take and a very popular take. I think, although the majority may believe what the everything that's said on the news, I think anybody worth their worth their weight in salt, a few cents, you know what I mean? They they can understand that things are happening out of out of the media's control, and the media gets their sources from someone. So who's telling? You know, like it's it's all a game of telephone. It's not working out well. Uh, well, everything does still work. So now let's try and put a binary operator to the test. That doesn't exist. Simple string could not allocate memory for simple string. <laughs> oh no. Ah, that's why you don't, uh, don't fuck with pointers. <laughs> Whoops. Yes. Permission denied. Cannot open output file. Okay, that was odd. In any case, did we do it? What did we do? Invalid syntax unknown symbol left. It didn't work. <laughs> Damn it. So, let's just think about some things. And print out our little token. Why are you mad? What is your issue? So it looks like... Sorry, you guys can't see. Passing parsing state instead of token. Ah. Good point. <laughs> Nexavex says, it's a historically important event for UK. I don't understand how that's any surprise to you. LenderXT says, is it though? Nexavex says, I have no idea. LenderXT says, but anyway, I'm not even going to debate because this is a coding stream. What a guy. What a legend. Nexavex says, yes, that's the spirit. What a legend. LenderXT taking the high road. You taking the high road over all of us. You paved right over. <laughs> that's beautiful, man. I wish I could act like that in more situations. Oh, what happened here? <laughs> uh, electric boogaloo. Perfect. But yeah, happenings in the world will always have different opinions on them, and we can uh, share them and still have a good time. Electric Boogaloo gets right, gets two, and gets double left. So we are getting double left now, but we're saying it's not a thing. Oh, I know what's going on. Uh, this is needed to catch binary operators like blah, blah, made up of multiple delimiters. Here's the thing, <laughs> if this doesn't work, we still want to try the original. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if this doesn't work, we want to try the original. So we're going to keep the token. I'm going to say token current copy copy. No, what should this be? This will be single lex operator equals current copy. Okay, so we copy that, and then we say, okay, try this, and if this doesn't work, so if that doesn't work, we need an else in there. If this doesn't work, then try the other operator symbol, which is the thing. So we need not operator symbol, single x operator symbol. 
Nexavex says, you just made me seem like I wanted to debate politics. No, I didn't mean to do that. Nexavex doesn't want to debate politics. I was saying, yes, that's the spirit. Like you agreed with him saying, yeah, we're not even going to debate. If I was, and I did seem that way, I'm sorry. I did not. I was misconstrued. Nexavec, Landar, we're all friends here. And I'm sure we all just want to be friends and hang out. If I construed something differently, or like one person was over the other or better, I, I, I didn't mean it like that. I just meant Landar took the high road. He's like, ooh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to do anything. And doing that is really tough in life, so I did want to commend him. But Nexovec, you immediately agreed with him, which I was also commending, but I may have not been as clear on that. Nexovec says, lol, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have written anything in the first place. Nah, don't think like that, man. I'm glad you talked. I really like hearing you. Even if it is, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, bike shedding about politics in a, co <laughs> in a coding stream. It doesn't matter. I really like having you uh, around and hearing what you have to say. Because I, uh, I really enjoy having things happen and conflict, which many people don't enjoy. But I thrive in conflict. I'm great at it. Also, Vivax almost missed you. Says, hey, hey, what's going on, Vivax? Thank you for tuning in. How's it going? We're having a great old time. Lander says, we go off topic every five seconds right here. It's true. Arusia says, interesting. So you try reading additional delimiters, and if that doesn't work, you back up. That's exactly correct. So we're going to have single operator symbol. And then we should probably just do this as an or. Yeah. So I think we can just do or. I mean, then we have to use the proper symbol, right? Do we use the symbol anywhere here? Interesting. We're going to have to do a little bit of a refactor, but it's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. So basically, da, 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 we check the look ahead value. And we could just create a new symbol instead. So let's do the simple and say that we'll fix it up later when we probably never will. Sorry, going back and forth, I know. And this is going to be from single lex operator. And same here. So instead of dot length, it's going to be end minus beginning. Perfect. So we update uh, all back to single lex binary operator to ensure we don't miss it. And again, we'd have to do this at every stage. Like this is when we should go back and start Okay, so to do would be iterate uh, advanced lexer, basically, right? Iterate advanced state. Okay, iterate advanced token and backwards until reaching a valid binary operator. <laughs> I know that's confusing, but that's what we have to do. Lander XT says end minus beginning equals middle. Oh no. <laughs> end minus beginning over two. Sir Aid says I put my infinite loop alignment chart in general. Ooh. <laughs> I'm always excited. What do we got? Sir Aid. Ooh, Arusius. Ooh, VVAX, I missed some chats. Just trying to debug some strange 400 error I'm getting with my Discord wrapper. I think it has to do with native TLS, so trying out Rust TLS. TLS is terrifying. It's like, can't we just use TCP? And why can't we all just get along? Arusia says, I think lexers are usually implemented that they know which delimiters they could read next that would still make a valid token. True. Then you wouldn't have to backtrack. True. Sir Aid says, I put my infinite loop alignment chart in general. I already read that, and then n minus beginning equals middle. I made it. I made it, chat. I, I, ca I caught up the chat. Then we have rust with loop. <laughs> Lawful good forever. 
Neutral good, while true. Chaotic good, do while true. Oh no. Oh no. Lander XT says, now you aren't caught up. All in separate chats. I'm caught up now. Ooh. <laughs> Lawful neutral. Oh no. This is horrible. This is not a forever. What is this? You should just put nothing there. But that's lawful good. Lawful neutral. Ooh, it's not so good. I see what you're saying. There's a true in there. True neutral, wow one. Perfect. Beautiful, simple, easy. <laughs> Lander XT says, N-O-T-N-O-W. Not now. <laughs> Lander, you're so awesome. King Bun says, I love lawful evil. I won't lie. Oh no. So we avoid loop, loop. Oh no, recursion. Lawful evil. Hashtag define ever. Forever. Okay, actually, that's actually really... <laughs> actually, 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 that's cool. I, I, uh, I never thought about this. Ooh. <laughs> you could put a zero with space in there. And it would uh, look like forever as well. That's really cool. Neutral evil. Loop. Go to loop. Ooh. Void funk. Asm one. Call funk. Jump one B. Oh no. Oh no, the relative jumps. <laughs> oh no, you scare me. You scare me with the relative jumps. That definitely is <laughs> is chaotic evil right there. Lamal. Okay, in any case, we're just gonna ch to handle simple things for now. And because hopefully things like that will work. What do we got? So we have state copy, we have single x operator. When we get a symbol from the single x operator, then we just have to do this little ditty again. Right? We say, oh, if environment get. And instead of, yeah, so we now update operator symbol. Sir Aid says, IMO define ever is cute, but also horrifying, Lamau. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't, I think it's fine. I mean, nobody ever writes like int ever, you know what I mean? Or char pointer. Like, it's not a commonly used name. It's totally doable to just have forever. <laughs> Gnarly Quack says, hey, hey, Lenzer, how's the language coming along? Oh. It's uh, it's coming along. I I'm not sure the last time you were here, but we had a, uh, we now have division and bit shifting. We're currently working on the uh, the parsing of operators, but we have division and bit shifting, so that's fun, and uh, those are being generated correctly and everything. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we also solved the downwards fun arg problem. I'm not sure if you uh, were here for that, but that's been solved. So you can pass functions as parameters to other functions and call them. Gnarly Quack says bit shifting with actual bit shifting operators. No, that's what we're working on right now. <laughs> Actually, it'd probably work, but yeah. So if we do get this, here's the thing. We just have to change operator symbol. We might have to use a go to chat. Okay, so we have this operator symbol and we look for things by doing this. And then we say update state from copy. See, we can't really do that. So we're going to need to save all the values of the state into a new state to be able to go back. Okay, we're not doing this, chat. We're not doing this. We're going to put this as a to-do. <laughs> it's a very important to-do. Perfect. Yep, we, we still need to do that. Now, all I have to do is go define a binary operator that don't look like this. <laughs> Hopefully we fail in code gen. Still invalid syntax unknown symbol right bracket. Hey, look, that's perfect. 
So now when we go to our examples in div test, this right bracket can be bit shift right. Hey, we generate code, but that's not good. <laughs> Did we already change code, Jane? Uh-oh. <laughs> Does binary operator just dissolve unknown binary operators? That's not good. How's our code? Did I already change them? Move eight racks? I did not. No code was generated. <laughs> we basically just made the left side, made the right side, and then that's it. So is there really... Just goes else if forever, there's no else and error? Ah, no, nah, why would we? <laughs> why would we handle uh, something silly like that, huh? <laughs> Christ. I can't believe we just let binary operators go through. I mean, before we couldn't create binary operators that didn't exist, so it makes sense. Sir Aid says, go to, yay, Lamau. Gnarly Quack says, yeah, when I was last here, you, you were using left, bra left square bracket for bit shifts, I think. Yep, we still are. We're fixing that now. It's, it's done. And we're going to say... What is this? Cogen expression... What? x86 blah blah blah. Also, we didn't... We don't have anything related to MS Windows. I'm not sure why we call it that still. Uh, Cogen. But yeah, we really don't need MS Window here. All we're gonna pass is a, uh, into the program. Well, for x86-64, we'll pass the proper external function call format. Cogen expression x86 ms4 64 ms win. We'll just say x86-64 does not recognize binary operator bleh. And then we'll like print it out. I guess it's the best we could do. Here, we'll even print it out to standard error. Ooh, fancy. And uh, what are we doing? This is going to be what? A variable, uh, binary operator. Unrecognized binary operator. I'm not sure why they were capitalized. And this is going to be expression. What do we string compare? Expression value symbol. Sir Aid says, I mean, I use Linux, and when I tested it, it compiled just fine for me. So, yeah, we, we absolutely generate no uh, <laughs> Microsoft Windows specific code. It's just when we were starting out, I wanted to be uh, as specific as possible. So that I didn't write all this code. Does not recognize binary operator. Write, right. Hey, look, we did it. Chat, we did it. So now all we have to do is change this, obviously. But that's much better that we can print out our unrecognized. Hey, look, no longer temporary bit shifting operators. Look at us. We're shifting right and left. How beautiful. So to shift left, there's also sal. Should we use sal and sar just to be consistent? I know it doesn't matter. We're going to use sal instead of shul. That's just because our shift right also uses sar, which was done by Sir Aid, the pull request. It was beautiful. Gnarly Quack says, works for me. Hashtag closed. <laughs> True. Sir Aid says, I mean, it's literally the same opcode. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's just for styling in our assembly, right? It's not important. I'm so excited to make like a machine code output. It's going to be fun. I like doing GNU assembly because it's uh, at least somewhat cross-platform. I know it's not fully, but you could assemble it, disassemble it, and then assemble it. It would take some doing, but it's cross-platform. <laughs> I want to make a WebAssembly backend, but I don't know WebAssembly. So if anyone knows how to load WebAssembly, that'd be great. 
Also, let's fix this. We're going to fix this to do. I'm just putting this here so I can find my way back. And uh, we're going to search for racks. So we have to do this little bitty. Okay. I didn't have to go that far. I was I was scared. And I basically want to say instead of using last expression, use expression children result register and get a name. Inside register name. Compare the register name if it's racks. Again, we should have a better way to do this. We should just be able to compare this and see if this is racks using an enum. But again, we're getting there. To do, <laughs> use enum comparison on register descriptor instead of or compare. Perfect. So we handled one to do, but we still have this if right hand side is in racks. So basically, uh, also this if string compare, it returns zero on success. So if these equal, this won't happen. But if they don't equal, this will happen. Just so you know. Yeah, see, that's perfect. So now move, see that's the code we just replaced. So we're moving, yeah, perfect. Should be all good. This is just a little bit of division. Uh, I don't even know what to call it, optimization. Oh my God, my brain is fried. <laughs> Gnarly Quack says, Sar sounds like a disease you don't want. Sal sounds like a buddy you go drinking with. So I say Sal. <laughs> Lamau, Gnarly Quack. Thanks for the laugh. That's hilarious. <laughs> a disease you don't want. Neg Vorsa says, hi, everyone. Hey, Neg Vorsa, how's it going? Gnarly Quack says, hello as well. I think that's waving. Kukato. This is beautiful. Uh... Right hand side is in racks. We must save racks first. Or we could just handle the right hand side first. Either way, it doesn't matter. Load racks with left hand side of division operator if needed. Perfect. So now, if we were to take a look at div code.s, excuse me, you can see that we no longer do a move racks racks because 8 is already in. Here, it's down here. See, we have moved 24 racks, and we don't need to move 24 like racks into racks because it's already in there. So we just push and pop it. We should also get our expression result register. Where's our register allocate? Here it is. This is going to get a little more complicated, but it's fine. We're just doing division code gen really quick. We're getting distracted. I saw a squirrel. Gnarly Quack says, I hope that's a wave. That's what I've always used it for, lol. So he's talking about the O slash. I honestly, I, I knew it was a wave. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't uh, like a boomer missing out on something. Like, ooh, it's, it's actually hello, but shortened or something like that. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not with the kids these days. So we only need to push racks in the case that our answer isn't racks. Here, we're not going to do that yet. That's going to be a complicated one. We'll put it as a to-do. Yep. So when we register allocate down here, we should also do that same thing, okay? And we're going to say that result register name is equal to expression result register. This thing. Just make sure. Copy and paste. 
Vivac says, Arg, I switched to Rust TLS and I'm still getting a 400. Ah, oh, I'm so sorry, Vivax. TLS can be so frustrating. Tr uh, transport layer security. It's basically the TSA of the internet. So if it's racks, then basically we don't need to do anything. And effectively, let's take a look at what this does. You can see since 24 is in racks, we don't move racks into racks, which is good. And then we also can just use racks as our result register. See, this looks a little wrong though. What do we got going on? So we do the division and then we generate see. So our allocated register, we move, see, this is uh, incorrect. What did we have here before? Get to the rescue. What did we have here before? So where are we? Here we are. Load racks with left hand side. That's not where we are. We said, so why can I not find where we are? Am I dumb? I'm dumb chat. Here it is. Here it is. It's here. I saw this and I was confused. I was like, oh, that's, that's that. But it's this. We're good. And effectively, move return value from racks to where it actually belongs. So we only want to move, we only want to do that if they don't equal racks. Which would make sense. But we also want to say if the left-hand side result register is racks, then we can just use that. Okay, let's think about this. So if the left-hand side is racks, if this equals zero, then we can just use it as our result register, which would be fantastic. Okay, so I'm just gonna write it to do. We can make, we can optimize the outputted code by testing if left hand side result is result register is racks, in which case we can use it destructively as our uh, as our division expression result register. So basically the left hand side result register, when it's racks, it can bubble up as the division expression result register, which means we won't need to push it. We won't need to do this comparison. We'll, we'll need to do this comparison once, but we won't need to do this comparison here or this comparison here. These only need to be done when we actually don't have racks as the left hand side. Okay. Yeah, it's getting a little messy, but I, I like it. And yeah, there we go. That should work. Let's just make sure. So effectively 24 in racks, four in R10, I div R10. That's perfect. So we divide 24 signed by four, which should get us six. And that six should be stored in racks. Oh, don't we have to, Sir Aid, are you still here? Don't we have to do the opposite? Do we have to do COTQ? Because if the number is sign extended, won't the result... I guess... No, 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 no. The result isn't 16 bytes. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. Unless it is. Is it? If the result is sign extended in RDX, Sarade says COTQ isn't a thing. I see. So the, the result is always... See, it just makes... <laughs> I'm confused because if we have to turn it into an octa word, it seems like we should have to turn it back into a quad word. Sir Aid says, if the result doesn't fit in racks, that's a, a division error exception. Oh, nice. Okay. Didn't know that. Sweet. You think they would just use RDX as the result, but no. <laughs> no. Why would you be logical? 
I guess that would only be for dividing by one, would it not? In any case, it's going well. I think the code we generated isn't too ridiculous. I, I don't know why we move R11 into racks twice. This is confusing me a little bit, so let's try and figure this out. So after the iDiv, we move R11 into racks. What is R11? See, R11 is a new scratch register that we haven't used before, <laughs> which worries me. Why do we move R11 into racks? Is that here? Let's do like here. I know this is terrible. That is here. How do we get R11 with the result register name? Because we allocate a new register. See, but this is backwards. We have to move racks into it. I think that's just a copy and paste error on my part. Yep, and for getting a new line, that would also be wonderful. Really smart. 200 IQ play. Sir Aid says RDX is for the remainder, that's why. Ah, RDX, that's right. We have Euclidean division, so we get the modulo and the division. Ooh, that's right. But that's also why division is so slow. Why can't they just make a mod? <laughs> like, why'd they have to make division also do all of it? Maybe the hardware is quicker at it, but I don't know. Seems like if you didn't have to figure out the modulo as well as the, the divide, it would be easier. But yeah, that makes sense, Sarade. Thank you for the reminders and not uh, calling me an idiot when I'm being one. <laughs> so now we just use racks. We move racks into R11. Hey, that's better. And then we move R11 into racks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We just have to make the division use racks as its output register, as its output expression. Yeah, as its output result register when the left hand side is racks. But we're not doing that yet. That's what that to do is for. We've done it. And we now have bit shifting, so let's make sure code.s does work. We should get 6. Put this at the bottom, what should we get? Anybody know? Uh, we should get 2. 8 to the right 2. What did we get? So we got 6 just then, and we got 2. That's perfect. And then go back here, put this at the bottom, and that should be 8. Whoops. Recompile, run again, and that should be 8. And it's 8. Hooray. We did it. We've, we're bit shifting. We're parsing the operators now. We can have operators that don't suck, like plus equals and minus equals, if we wanted. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> uh, we could also, since we have this here, use modulo. What is modulo's precedence in C? Again, I'm just, Sir Aid, I'm going to take your advice and look up the C operator precedence table. Sure, tutorials point. You've been okay. Associativity. Right to left. What? I know how precedence works. How does what is associativity? It doesn't explain what this means at all. <laughs> okay, doesn't matter. In any case, we can see that is this like from top to bottom? There's no numbers. Basically, assignment and unary prefix operators are right associative. Everything else is left associative. I still don't know what that means. It associates. I know what that means. So like. A unary operator that's a prefix would be right to left because the actual operand comes after it. Plus is left associative, so a plus b plus c equals a plus b plus c, where a plus b is done first and then c is done first. I see, but right associative, it would be done after. a equals b equals c is a equals b equals c. So it's like what, okay. I get you. So 7 modulo 4 modulo 2 is 7 modulo 4 and then modulo by 2. 
rather than the other way around. I think, lol. Sir Aid says, yeah, perfect. Uh, we're not going to worry about that, but these are all multiplicative, and you can see that they're all equal, so that's perfect. We'll just have it equal. And then do our div test and do 20... What's a good one? 69 modulo 8? That'd be 5. We ran into our error there that we just wrote. Very handy. And now we can handle that operator in much the same way as division, except copy a different one. Which is going to be a little... A little annoying. So we're gonna have a little value here. We're gonna have a flag. Can we do that? Does anybody know if we can do this? Yeah, we can't we can't declare in here, but we can assign. So we'll do if string compare. Can we do a declaration before and then a comma? No, still no declaration. Had to try. <laughs> Had to try. Talking of a mod, talking a mod of a mod isn't code I write every day. Haha. <laughs> Definitely not. I've never even thought about that. So we're just gonna. I feel like we should reuse this code, but it's gonna be hard. It's fine. We're just gonna have a double comparison. Uh, to do fix remove double comparison I think these can go under and then we're going to say if this what just happened why did it just what it just shortened did everybody see that it just like disappeared and now it's green why is this green there's a green check mark now. Chad, I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> that did it again. Okay. Um, why why happen? Okay, still didn't work. That was difficult. I was just trying to copy and paste and it kept as soon as I hovered over it, it would break. What is it complaining about? Is anybody... Did I miss... So this closes this. This closes this. Everything is fine. <laughs> ah! The re <laughs> oh no. Sir Aid says, The reason why assignment operators are right associative is because this is valid C and has to do the right thing. Int... <laughs> Oh god. I should go to the end of the visual line. <laughs> int a equal int a b c a equals b equals c equals some function. So basically a equals what this equals, b equals what this equals, and c equals the what this equals. Crazy. This is horrible code. <laughs> Lamal. Don't Compare twice. So we'll set this little flag if we're doing a modulo, and then we'll say uh, basically. All this would be if division, so move return value from racks into where it actually belongs. So we'll say if modulo flag else. And effectively, move value from our dx into wherever it actually belongs. I'm just going to do this unconditionally for now. So we move our DX into the result register name. I think we can do outside of the loop. It 
Sorry, it says, yeah, exactly. My favorite example of assignment operator abuse would be this variable swap. Oh no. Oh no, just seeing it, I know it's bad. <laughs> what is this? So this is XOR. Right? XOR equals. So A is XOR B. So, oh Christ. So A is equal to X or B, which is equal, and then B is equal to X or A. So this just swaps the two. This is almost surely undefined behavior. This swaps the value of A and B. This is incredible. That's really cool. <laughs> I can't believe that's valid, or at least should work according to the associativity. We'll have to think about if we have associativity in our parser. I just haven't thought about it. <laughs> okay. So now in code.s, we should see that we do a division and then move our dx into rdi instead of whatever we had before. And then rdi into racks. There you go. And if we run that, failed with code 5. That's perfect, because that is 69 modulo 8. So if we did modulo 4, we should get 1, right? Because 68 is valid. So let's see if we get 1. Whoops, that's the wrong spot. What did we get? We got 1! A. Sir Aid with the knowledge bomb dropping again. Int j equals i plus 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 i. Oh no. So, plus, pl oh no. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Because we have to evaluate this first, but doing this reassigns this. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> the order of evaluation is unspecified. Exactly. It seems like we'd have to evaluate this first, but then evaluating this would mean, like, do we evaluate the left-hand side or the right-hand side first? It shouldn't matter because plus is uh, commutative, so that's very interesting. That's very interesting. I like these little issues, these little probs. But yeah, using multiple increment operators in one expression is undefined behavior. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> well, hey, we have bit shifting and division. That's a good start. It only took us two hours. I kind of want to optimize this, but I, I'm, I'm not going to. Okay. With that, we have everything done. And all we have to do is do other things. So look at that. <laughs> how about how about that? All we have to do is other things, yo. Uh no, let's see. It may be a good time to stop. I've got uh I started late today. It's already 11:30. Let's take a look. We did update the lexer. Done at this time. Woohoo. We now have uh blip blip and blip blip as binary operators. Why are these underlined? A little confused. Oh, it's a target. Uh, yeah, I know. So basically in uh, org mode, you can do a target like this. That creates an indirect target. That's like a link in a file. So you can actually link to these targets from within the same file, like Markdown with the, the hashtag IDs and everything like that. So it thinks I'm creating a target here, but I'm not. Uh, we now have the as binary operators. That's interesting. It, uh, we never ran into it up here just because we only did one. That's funny. As valid bit shifting binary operators. We did it. Woo. 
I'm so excited. <laughs> no, I actually am excited. Okay, so let's do do some commit the commit. Sure. 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 Keep beginning of token the same, but extend the end by another token. Sure. Fix our binary operators. Absolutely. Modulo. Oh, I didn't. I think I'll leave modulo and division changes for their own thing if I can. Uh, what is this? Single X operator. So that's parse binary infix operator. That's what we have to do. Modulo. Okay, so for... Where is this? What is that? Oh, I just... I moved the... I removed a line. That's all. We can deal with that. So there's the modulo changes and division. Sir Aid says, I might take another look at some code, code gen stuff and maybe open another pull request if that's all right. Absolutely. Completely free and open source. Do whatever you would like. I will get everything committed so that we don't have uh, some branching trees going on in Git. And uh, yeah, that'd be sweet. We can review your <laughs> pull request again at the beginning of the next stream. It'll be beautiful. <laughs> Arusia says, oh, it's in Git. Do you have a link? Absolutely. Down below in the Twitch about section, you can go to my, uh, my GitHub and the fun compiler is there. Sir Aid says, oh, I'm fine with you not committing stuff. So, uh, so long as you take care of the merging, that is. <laughs> you, you see, that's why I'm like, oh, I gotta get this merged. <laughs> But I will take care of the merging, of course. I've done a lot of oopsies on my Git repos, and I have never given up. I've never started a new one, so I, I've, I've, I've always been able to fix them, get them back into a workable state where the history isn't too bad. Uh, sure, blop those. Let's use sal instead of shul, and use the new bit shifting operator and then check for unrecognized operators these are all division changes lamau <laughs> okay so this will be fix uh well, we won't say fix we'll say update we'll say upgrade lexer to handle multi byte I don't even know how to say this. To handle operators with mul made up of multiple delimiters. Sure, sure. <laughs> the Elixir uh, is quite simple and general and has a hard time dealing with multiple delimiters in a row. This is needed so that we can our speech close paren or something like that as its own thing, even when not separated oh, by white space. Perfect. However, it makes parsing lexing blup blup and blup blup a challenge since those are also delimiters with this new technique we cannot worry uh, we do not have to worry uh, I'm just I'm gonna avoid that that'll be good okay now update modulo we'll say new binary infix operator here, we'll do uh, our little celebration. Modulo! I like having our little upside down uh, exclamation point. It makes me feel special. Modulo! With the new binary operator. Uh, this thing. 
which is the modulus of the left side by the right hand side, also known as the remainder after division. Perfect. This is extremely useful and even used in Rule 110. I'm pretty sure. From when I remember writing Rule 110 in Core, pretty sure I used modulo because I got I wrote plus minus uh, and multiply divide, and then I was like, oh. Now I need modulo, when I actually went to write rule 110. Sir8 says, I was implementing a syntax similar to C++ templates in my compiler earlier today, and lexing the closing arrow bracket is a tad bit painful, so I know what you're going through, lol. Yes! <laughs> it's so hard to understand when something should be a part of a, the previous token or not. Like, it's so difficult. Should this continue in this certain context? It's difficult. It's difficult. That's why I like Lisp's uh, choice. Everything's white space delimited or parentheses delimited. Otherwise, it's one thing. <laughs> yes, we still have to do this. Yes, we still have to do this. Yeah, we still have to do that. <laughs> yeah, we still have to do that so that we can access locals from functions. Yeah, we still have to have like a while or a for or something like that. We've got a lot of work to do still, folks. Got a lot to do. I don't think while would be that difficult. But I also have to get started on something today. Like in, in real life, not just sit here on my computer. <laughs> as much as I would love to. Hey, look, we had a, a, a thing about this. Oh, this is a little bit different. So this is how do we equal plus, how do we handle plus equals? I really like the just constructing uh, two nodes for these specific uh, op binary operator cases. I wonder if we could even generalize and have any binary operator before an equals do a reassignment thing. I mean, that's, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> that is interesting. Sir Aid says fourth too. I don't know too much about it, but it doesn't really care about anything other than white space, as far as I know. That's right. Fourth, fourth, fourth. They all are just white space delimited. That's it. Sir Aid says, "Oh dear." <laughs> right? Because then we could have right equals. We could have not equals. We could have like less than or equals, greater than or equals. <laughs> uh oh. Wait. <laughs> doesn't really work with less than or equal, or greater than or equal, though. <laughs> I wrap these in markdown. This is not markdown. That's better. <laughs> Sir Aid says, any binary operator? What about equals, Kappa? Well, that's the great thing. Equals is a binary operator. It's the conditional equality. So like uh, A equals 2 is equivalent to like uh, in C, A equals equals 2. You know what I mean? Because our reassignment has the colon. So we actually just never have equals equals. So equals equals would also work. You'd be A equals equals 2. And this would say A is reassigned to A equals two. So true or false. Oh, my cat's in here. Oh, no. Chat. Pray for me. 
Sir Aid says that's cursed. Uh, so A equals B would be A equals B. That's cursed. I love it. Lamau. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, A equals equals B would effectively be A is assigned to A equals B, right? So like, oop, I'm not sure what happened there. Like that. Beautiful. Time to implement pre-assignment and post-assignment operators. Oh no. So instead of having A equals equals, you could have A equals equals the other way around. Sir Aid says, yeah, I put the colon on the wrong side, rip. Lamel, it's okay. Fun fact, early drafts of C used equals plus, etc. for plus equals. That's right, it was only fixed in C89, right? It was later changed for obvious reasons. Yeah, because A equals minus five that would be a difficult one because in c it's supposed to work like this so is this a is reassigned to negative five or is this a basically you would have to define prefix unary operators you'd have to parse those as part of a number like as part of this singular expression but then you'd also have to say if there's a space here. Like, it just created confusing, because this all of a sudden would be different from that. Which isn't, isn't great. <laughs> Sir Aid says, Ker <laughs> Kearney and Richie, Colonel, what is it? Ker uh, Kerrigan and Richie C is wild, K and R. My favorite K and R C example that I read is some book a while back, int abort equals four. Oh no. <laughs> Gnarly Quack says, I know it didn't have type function parameters, but you'd specify the types after the prototype or something. What? It didn't have type function parameters, but you'd specify the types after the prototype or something. I lost it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gnarly. I I'm too dumb. Would these operators before the equal sign chain? No. But they would chain into other binary operators, and the, since this is a binary operator. Yeah, no, we just do one look ahead. We'd parse a binary operator look ahead for equals and then continue. We wouldn't like continually parse binary operators and then do a reassignment and do all that. Because that wouldn't always work. We'd have to, the type checking on that would just be an insanity. So if a plus equals b is a is assigned to a plus b, then a plus plus equals could be a is assigned to a plus a is assigned to a plus b. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Something like foo x y int x int y. Oh no. Something like so you wrote foo x y int x int y. Blah. That's terrifying. That's horrible syntax. It's like our current syntax. Sir Aid says, yeah. That's terrifying. This was real? Oh no. Oh no. With a link to CKNR. You see a function definition like Ooh, so they made like a mathematical function definition and then type annotations on the function definition parameters. Wow. Wow. Even Clang Pedantic issues no warnings. It still works? No. Also, his granddad died. That's sad. I'm sorry, Jim. <laughs> Now I feel sad. <laughs> Gnarly Quack says, they still use that syntax. Oh man, no, no. The wild west of programming, lol. I think C23 is getting rid of that. It's obsolete as of C23. All right, all right. That's pretty cool though. <laughs> for 20 years it worked. I guess 50 years for Colonel and Richie. Kurgan and Richie, I always say Colonel. 
Arusia says, I like it. First you declare only names, and then you declare the actual local variables. Yeah, it's okay. It's not like the worst thing in the world. It's just, uh, it's just different. I didn't expect that that would still be around. Why do we have a to-do error here? Shouldn't we just return error? Like, why do we have to-do error here? I'm just gonna... This is bothering me. No, I'm not gonna change it. I'm gonna keep everything as it was for the commit the commit the. Perfect. Gnarly Quack says, you also no longer need to have the void. I mean, technically... All the compilers never really forced it, but you're right. You don't have to, you're pretty soon, you're not going to have to do int void foo void to have no arguments insured. You can just have nothing. How beautiful is that? Sir Aid says, that's why you can just write unsigned for unsigned int even today. That's right. I do that a lot because an unsigned is obviously an integer. I would rather have like uint and int though. I don't see why that's not a thing. Perfect. So when non-zero, deallocate left-hand side register and free result string. Yeah, that's a reassignment. Makes sense. Okay, we are good. I think uh, I think we're gonna call it good, chat. We have a lot to do. We have a lot to think about. We got a lot done, and uh, I think it's a good time. Gnarly Quack says, I think the issue is the compiler can no longer type check arguments based on the function prototype because the prototype is only foo xy without type information. That would definitely be an issue, but I think it's it's not. I think the 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 parameters are part of the the prototype, but I could be wrong. The parameter types. Sir Aid says, I usually just type def all the standard int types to u8, u16, u32, etc. That's fair. Yeah, having the uint t. I did that same thing in Lenser OS, where you like, okay, u32 is going to be uint32t, <laughs> right? I definitely did that. You know, I did it in C++, so I could use a, a type def, I guess. It doesn't matter. It's also the wrong way around. Yeah, I know. It's definitely worth it, but I wish... I don't know. I feel like there should be an unsized, like integer and unsigned. There should be int and uint versus something like this. Because there's no way to get the same size of an integer as unsigned. King Bun says, to do, cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad now. Who do cry? Arusia says, good point. Gnarly quack. I could be wrong. K and R function definitions are not something I spend a lot of time working with. <laughs> Rusia says, I guess modern compilers handle that by parsing the parameters after the prototype and inc incorporating them in the function signature. Whammo. That's exactly correct. Sarade says, I mean, you can always call it uint in your language. <laughs> that's true. It's just, I hate with the amount of like what just happened? I hate with the amount of like stuff in uh, C where it's like, okay, you have a char and you have an unsigned char. Why not just call these a byte and have everything then convert into signed or unsigned, like with casts? You know what I mean? It's a little confusing. <laughs> Gnarly Quack says, or maybe you da int? Oh no. Yes, you da int. <laughs> Perfect. It's like taint, but with a D. <laughs> Arusia says, have you ever used the signed keyword in C? I have not. This is the best type, though. <laughs> Stat signed, unsigned int. I don't think anybody's used the sign types since 1970. 
I mean, in a language where const, 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 int x is a valid declaration, expecting sane names like uint is maybe a bit much, lol. That's fair. <laughs> That's absolutely fair. Okay. Okay, okay. We're doing pretty good. Also, we did indenting. We did that. Haha. We did that. <laughs> We got. Oh my, Mr. Mugame? Are you doing black magic? That's actually really cool. At <laughs> Converting binary to decimal at 1 kilohertz. That's running really fast on the breadboard. I'm surprised you don't have EMF issues. That's awesome. So you see his clock module generating a clock, running the bus. This here, these are the ALUs, is what it looks like. Yeah, these must be all the ALUs here, all linked into each other. And then we have to have, this looks like ROM, the EEPROM, read-only memory. And then RAM is probably, this is RAM, question mark. And uh, this is, this may be RAM, these big chips. And then control registers and stuff. This is beautiful. Mr. Mugume, very beautiful. Ice. Imgur still compressed the video heavily, Sag. Ooh. Also, I missed a bunch of stuff. I'll catch up on it. You're a legend, W. I like that. We're doing W. It's a W. <laughs> that actually is really cool. This is an 8-bit breadboard computer, and it's uh it's working. I think <laughs> what's it print out? 169? It does. 169. Pretty legendary. Lamal. Yay. <laughs> Mr. Mugume says 169. Yes. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thread says, I mean, you can always make it worse. Declaring a function that returns a function pointer as C is where it really gets cursed. Nah, declare a function pointer that returns a function pointer. That's when it gets cursed. <laughs> That's when it's oof. But you're right. That syntax for function pointers is so bad. It's so, so bad. Okay. Well, with that done, I think we're going to take a break for the day. And uh, I'm going to try and get some stuff done in, I'm, I would say, real life. This is real life, but uh, just in the physical world and not in the digital. <laughs> Thank you everybody so much for coming out. We now have a language fully on GitHub. Go down below, check it out. We have division, bit shifting, percentage. I know today was a bit of a lull. We just updated the Lexer and it's a bit of a short one, but I think it's okay. We had so much fun and uh, it's really awesome. I'm really happy that we only have one type in our language is coming along so far. I would love to make a byte type soon and then we're going to have to get into type casting and ooh, <laughs> scary, spooky stuff like that right? So, uh, yeah, this is all going to be so much fun. Mr. Mugume says, you're reminding me I can't do pointer math yet. Ooh, I can't either. <laughs> We're not ever going to allow pointer math, though, so it's fine. Next vex says, can you return a recursive function, return a function pointer with a macro? Oh, no. <laughs> Gnarly Quack says, a pointer to a function that accepts a function and returns one. What? A pointer to a function that accepts a function and returns one. The black hole opens. <laughs> oh no. Nexavex says, thank you for the stream, King Buns. Thanks for the stream. Enjoy your weekend. I'm heading out to climb some more 14er mountains this weekend here soon. Ooh, that's crazy. Mountain climbing is uh, something I'm really interested in. I like just climbing rocks, being a little... Uh, Goat monkey. Gnarly Quack says, technically, you only need a bit type. So, oh, you just you just made me think of an Esolang. What if we had an Esolang that's exactly like C, but there's only the bit type? <laughs> there's only one internal type, and it's bit. That would actually be interesting. Arusia says, like in Julia, I think. Julia has a bit type? How does that work? Sir Aid says, oh no. Oh yes. <laughs> to do. That's the lang with bit. 
exactly like C, but only with a single type. Bit. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> oh my god, I can't type. <laughs> Bit 32, main, bit 32, bit 64, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's so good. TTV. At, TTV at Surade. <laughs> main, <laughs> bit 32, bit 64. Can't forget, gotta name them. Arg C and Arg B. <laughs> That's so good. It's so good. Lamau. So that way, int is not a built-in type. That's correct. That's not what what our language is going to be, but it, I would love to make an SOLang like this. Gnarly Quack says, let's go! <laughs> Nexovec says, I wish there was C, but not 40 years old. Pick Rust. Nexovec says, one bit alignment. Wait. <laughs> Yeah, there's going to be some packing issues by the compiler, because if you do bit 1 or bit a equals 4, that's going to reserve a whole byte on the stack. Or we'll have to do some things like uh, XORing to access and stuff like that, which is totally doable, totally doable. Sir Aid says at least, at least one bit aligned. <laughs> yeah, actually these memory accesses are faster if they're one bit aligned, so... <laughs> Bools will finally be as space efficient as possible. Yes. Why would you even have a bit type? So that, because that's because you need a type. And then in C, you could dereference a bit pointer. So you could say bit pointer A equals some memory, right? You could like malloc eight. And then you could say, you know, pointer bit equals one or a zero. <laughs> bit plus plus. Point bit equals zero. You know. Nexovex says, just have a byte. It's much simpler. Are you not paying attention, Nexovex? This is for an esolang. The point of it is to be esoteric and hard to use. <laughs> Lol. Pointer to a bit. I love it. <laughs> also, consider this. Built-in support for bit fields without all the headaches. True. True. Gnarly Quack says eight bytes just to reference one bit. That's right. Each <laughs> each bit will actually be eight bytes. No, this is just so we can do bit plus plus and stuff like that. Hello? Email? Okay, there we go. <laughs> Took a while. Nexovex says each pointer will be one byte or one bit. Yeah, there's two pointers. <laughs> Sir Aid says eight would be what? A bit 32 literal? That's correct. Eight would be a bit 32 literal. Or it would just be a... <laughs> we could do uh, one plus one plus one. Yeah, it'd be a bit 32 literal effectively. There's two pointers and one of them is null. Lamal. <laughs> That's like the, the Spider-Man meme. They're both pointing at each other. They're <laughs> like, wait, you're Spider-Man. You'd have to dereference an array of pointers to get an actual bit value. Lamal. <laughs> it's true. Gnarly Quack says, I meant the pointer. Eight bytes, assuming 64-bit architecture to one bit. Oh, oh, you're talking about the address. Talking about the address. <laughs> I see what you're talking about. So the malloc, what it returns, this pointer will actually be eight bytes on x86, 64. That's true. Eight bytes to manage one bit. I see what you're saying now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Nexorec. You know what you're talking about. Most of the time I don't. So assume that. <laughs> this is so good. Lamau. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, with that, we're going to end the stream. That was a great little <laughs> ending. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. I'm going to point you down below to the Twitch About section, 
while I say goodbye. So down below in the Twitch about section, there is the GitHub where you can check out all the code that we wrote today. You can check out the uh, any other projects I've worked on, an OS, a text editor, another programming language, Corth, etc. All of it. Next Vex is see ya, Mr. Mugume. Bye, Gnarly Quack. Have a good weekend, Lizard. Take care. Thank you, Gnarly Quack. You have a good weekend too. Bye, Nexo. Bye, Mugume. Serade says ta da. Ta da, Serade. Ta da. That's fancy, by the way. Doxus93 with the last minute follow. Thank you so much. You all are coming in clutch right at the end here. Thank you. Doxus93 with the follow. We love you. Welcome to the club. 118. 118 of us there's at least 12 and uh <laughs> anyway down below in the twitch about section you will also find the youtube which stores all my previous broadcasts ever that i've ever done on this channel so you can see us write this compiler from the int main all the way to what we did today as well as a few other series i've worked on like a suicidal ai bot which uh, you should definitely go check out that's on the youtube there on the uh, Discord, I really recommend joining. We have a ton of fun. There's announcements every time I go live. Mr. Mugume Big Brain shares his ultimate uh, breadboard computer uh, progress. We get code reviews. We got progress on Eternal Wild Fox, Lexer, Parser, and everything. What he's working on, which is everything, it seems. It's pretty awesome. Everything's positive. We all love each other, and uh, let's have a great time. So join this Discord. Check out the YouTube and if you would be so kind, I would greatly appreciate if you could check out that PayPal donation link down below. It's in the Twitch About section as well. And uh, if you leave a message and you leave your name, I'll shout you out on stream, live, in one of these VODs, in these videos. You'll be on the YouTube as well. And uh, yeah, just thank you so much to everybody for watching. If you can't donate, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. It's uh, it's okay. All I care is that you are positive and you are, you are awesome and share everything that you make. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Ta-da! Serade. That was really cool, by the way. I like that. Goodbye. Bye-bye!